You're listening to Puma Podcast. Imagine a hidden underwater world teeming with more marine life than anywhere else on Earth. This is the Verde Island Passage, or VIP, the Amazon of the oceans. But this precious ecosystem is under threat. Billions of um, residents from the five provinces, from the five coastal provinces, depend on the VIP for fishing. And at the same time, the VIP is thriving tourism industry, which relies on the VIP's um, marine life and healthy waters. Despite its ecological and economic um, significance of the VIP, However, um, its role for food security is threatened by a lot of um, human activities and we're not um, stranger to those activities. Hi, I'm Tatiana Maligro Puma Podcast and you're listening to Teka Teka. In this episode, we talk about the Verde Island Passage and the ongoing fight to have it declared a World Heritage Site. How can this designation contribute to the passage's protection? To understand why groups want the Verde Island Passage, or VIP, designated a World Heritage Site, we first need to understand what exactly it is. So the Verde Island Passage is this stretch of waters located just south of Manila. It separates Luzon from Mindoro and connects the West Philippine Sea to key waterways in southern Luzon like the Tayabas Bay. Now this marine hotspot is home to an astounding diversity of species, including over 300 coral species and over 17,000 species of fish. Many of these species are found nowhere else on Earth, and that's why experts call it the center of the center of marine biodiversity. The very island passage, the central part of the Philippines, has more species than any place on the planet, more marine species in concentration than any place on the planet. This is unique. So it, 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 it really makes sense to conserve this because it's, it's like the Amazon River Basin of the marine realm. It is a unique concentration of biodiversity. That was Dr. Kent Carpenter. He's a biological science professor at Old Dominion University. He was speaking at the VIP Awareness Week celebration of the Protect VIP. There are a group of environmental advocates Fisherfolk communities and civil society groups pushing for the protection of the passage. Dr. Carpenter and his colleague Victor Springer were the first to coin the term Amazon of the Oceans for the VIP. They say there are many more marine species living in the VIP that have yet to be discovered, and that's why they think the world needs to put its best foot forward into preserving this waterway. So, if you really want the biggest bang for your buck, if you really want to concentrate uh, conservation dollars on uh, conserving the most valuable place, you can concentrate on the Verde Island Passage because you're not only protecting this unique system, but you're also protecting over 50% of the marine species found in the entire Indo-Pacific. Martha Vergara, Deputy for Oceans and Climate at the Center for Energy, Ecology, and Development, or SEED, emphasizes the crucial role of the VIP in providing not only livelihoods, but also sustenance for coastal communities. It generates employment opportunities and incomes as well for coastal communities. The VIP's fisheries um, not just provide livelihood for residents, but they contribute significantly to the food security in the region. Um, fish and other marine products sourced from the Verde Island Passage um, are essential uh, for the diets of the residents, a source of protein and other micronutrients as well. So that's how important the VIP is. Because of the rich biodiversity within the VIP, and its role as a key source of income for many coastal communities, various groups call for its designation as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. We talk more about how this can help keep the VIP alive after this break. The Verde Island Passage, or VIP, is considered such a crucial waterway for the Philippines and the world 
because of its rich biodiversity. But it's no surprise that it's constantly under threat due to commercial activities like mining. Here seeds Martha Vergara again. Also fuel fired plants in Batangas, they put pressure in the fragile ecosystems that are in the VIP. Increased maritime traffic has led to um, habitat destruction, to pollution, and this, um, all of which all of which are um, have negative implications for the biodiversity and the productivity of the VIP. Just last year, um, in February 2023, the sinking of the Empress um, off the coast of Longuan in Oriental Mindoro has devastated you know, the coastal communities. Um, it has uh, affected the lives and livelihood of coastal communities, especially fisher folk. Aside from these wide-scale commercial activities, Jella Petinas of Batang VIP also says that destructive fishing practices also threaten the rich biodiversity of the passage. Just a context, um, in 2018 up to 2019, we did a livelihood capacity building program for the people from Verde Island. The community I have been helping are sadly unsustainable fishers. They know it. They know it. Back in the 60s and 70s, they used to use cyanide. That was about 1994. And thankfully, they can do this today 100% without cyanide. And I can guarantee that this is, this is true. Nobody uses cyanide anymore in Verde Island. And um, sadly, over the years, they've been going deeper and deeper into the reef. Why? For one, we have much less and less fish caught in the shallow reefs. Dati, chore entry lang ang dami na eh. Ngayon, wala na. So where do we actually start in protecting the VIP? Martha says they've been advocating for legal protections for the VIP. We've been advocating for the legal protection of the Bird Island Passage through the expanded National Integrated Protected Area System, the ENIPA staff. So we've been pushing for that, and we want to build, we, add, we want to add to that and build a campaign that will designate the VIP as UNESCO's World Heritage Site. And we believe that, um, we believe that this status would not just put um, not just fun, like you know, the VIP, um, not just for additional um, conservation funding, it would um, increase, you know, mas malalaman ng mga tao what the VIP is. We believe that it would add um, another layer of protection to secure the VIP's um, very important ecosystems, irreparable ecosystems. Designating the VIP as a World Heritage Site does not only give it the legal and international recognition it deserves, certain sites will also get access to the World Heritage Fund to aid in its conservation efforts. At the end of the day, for all the benefits the passage brings to the communities around it, groups are fighting for it because it's their shared responsibility to. Here's Dr. Ivan Henares, Secretary General of the UNESCO National Commission of the Philippines, with a final word. Our generation is not the one to break the passage of this gift to humanity. We are the ones who take the responsibility of fully conserving the Verde Island Passage against natural and man-made risks. We recognize its outstanding universal value as being the center of the most marine biodiverse region on Earth, providing habitat to many species and supporting communities for many generations. Okay, so I'm going to admit this. Before this story, I only knew the Verde Island Passage as this beautiful waterway that many environmentalists are striving to protect. And beyond its impact on Filipino livelihood, Learning about just how many different species of marine life there gave me a deeper appreciation of the VIP. And it also made me excited and left me wondering, what else will we be able to discover in our own waters? So again, I'm Tatiana Maligro. 
This episode was edited by Pidoy Blanco and our Teca Teca executive producer is Jill Caro. We hope that this episode made you appreciate the Amazon of the oceans a bit more. And if you know someone who wants to help in conserving Philippine marine life, it would also be great if you shared this episode with them too. Thanks for listening.